your call 107.1 the point this is mike mansion and we have um coming on a guest who is uh, bill randalls he is uh going to be running for governor or running for governor i shouldn't say be running for governor he is um i'm going to give our phone numbers out and if you've got questions that you'd like to touch uh touch on with bill uh, i'm going to ask that you be concise and pointed with your question so that we have uh, time for calls and for Bill to be able to answer those. Our phone numbers are 257-1111 and 866-554-6636. So uh, good morning, Bill. Are you on the line with us? Good morning. Good to be with you. Good morning. Um, Bill, you're running for governor. Um, you're running on the Republican ticket. And um, I'm assuming that you've got some issues that you'd like to talk about and, and some, some stuff that you want to kind of bring to our attention that are platforms or things that you think are important. Um, I've got a couple I'd like to talk about, but I want to hear a little bit about you and who you are and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself first and foremost. Well, I grew up um, down in Arkansas, northwest Arkansas, uh, grew up in a trailer park, uh, my parents were teenagers who didn't finish high school. Our family business was a roadside fruit market, and we raised hogs on the side. <laughs> okay. And uh, I start, I became a Christian when I was 15. I started preaching when I was 16, so I preached all around the Ozarks. I went to Southwest Baptist University in Bolivar, Missouri, over by Springfield, uh, thinking I was going into full-time ministry. And I realized the full-time ministry wasn't my calling, but I still pastored a couple of churches. I'm an ordained Southern Baptist minister. And then I went down to Baylor and got a master's. And then I went to Harvard Law School. Um, one of the very few conservatives you'll ever meet from Harvard Law School. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not exactly the bastion of, li- of uh, conservative thought over there. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, but it is a great furnace. If you are, as I was, a Reagan conservative when Reagan is in office, yeah. you go up there, you will find your beliefs tested to the max. And right. I, found my, I found my conservative ideas held up far better than the liberal beliefs I heard, far better than the liberal beliefs I heard from Barack Obama, who was there when I was there. If you don't come out of that fire with your, with your metal purified boy, nothing will, right? <laughs> exactly. I said to a lot of voters, I said, you know, for a change, why don't you send a conservative to office who knows the liberal playbook as well as any liberal? There you go. So, you know, when I got out of law school, um, Unlike the current president, I actually had to pay for my degree, so I had to get a real job. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm, I'll wager that Harvard was not inexpensive. It was not. And so I worked for big law firms uh, a couple of years in St. Louis and about 16 in Kansas City. I became a partner and owner in one of the nation's largest law firms, and I practiced law all around the country. But I always kept my interest in public policy and history and that sort of thing and studied it my whole life. And when Barack Obama got elected, it was sort of the straw that broke the camel's back for me. And I was telling everyone how bad it was going to be under him and what he was going to do. And my wife finally said, why don't you stop talking about how you would fix things and go do it? So after a lot of prayer and reflection, um, wrapped up my practice. And I've been running for governor for about 18 months now, going around the state and spreading my word about uh, what's wrong and uh, how we get back on the right track. Outstanding. Sometimes it takes our uh, other half to really tell us, you know, I'm tired of hearing about it. Go tell somebody else. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you know what they say. Behind every great man is a woman who couldn't be more surprised. Right. <laughs> now that's a new twist I haven't heard before, but I kind of like it. I'm going to use it. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, there are a couple of issues that uh, that I think are important in the state of Missouri, and I, I, I'd like to hear those that you think are like, you know, the top five bullet points, if you will, no pun intended, about what you, know, what you think are, are areas that we really need to, um, to, to address. You know, I, I, I'll just kind of brief you with mine, because I, and then you can address those that, you, that overlap or whatever. But I have a real problem with public unions. If you are working for the government, 
there is absolutely no need for you to need a union to protect you from the entity that actually creates, maintains, and executes the law. I, I, there's absol- it's an inexcusable position and policy. I like school choice. I want to see schools in, the, in, in this state. I want to see, I want to be able to dictate where my tax money goes. And I am sick and tired of public education and teachers unions, which rule the, which rule the day and dictate and in, inculcate and, and indoctrinate our children with a bunch of nonsensical, uh, you know, liberal philosophy that I don't want my kid to learn. And I also don't like NDAA. I'd like to know what the, what your intentions are about making a constitutional amendment to bar any federal or any uh, state um, employee, whether that be uh, on our National Guard or our local law enforcement, emergency services, all of it, from being able to participate in the most treasonous and unconstitutional document or, or approved law, if you will, that's ever been passed in the United States. I'd like to know a little bit about your ideas on this broadband initiative that the current governor has been pushing. And I really have a problem with CID zones, these little tax zones where private landowners get get money to improve their property at the expense of taxpayers. So that's my platform. Where's yours? (laughs) Well, we have a lot of overlap in the very specifics. We have a complete overlap, I think, in philosophy. I think the biggest issue facing us is uh, one of freedom. Uh, freedom is being suffocated at all levels by government. Government's crushing the private economy. It's crushing our property rights. It's, it's crushing our beliefs. It's trying to micromanage everything we do. It's that weight of government, like pulling a broken-down Chevy under your front lawn and killing the lawn, that's killing freedom. And within that, you have the damage to the economy. You have this crony capitalism you're talking about. Uh, A huge chunk of of my agenda uh, concerns moving power from Washington to Jeff City and to Jeff City back to the people. Uh, I'm for Missouri becoming a right-to-work state. As you said, public sector unions, I don't think they're they're democratic or constitutional. Uh, I'm a big school choice uh, proponent. I'm a big proponent of comprehensive judicial reform, comprehensive regulatory reform, and I'm for getting government out of the special deals with the tax code entirely. I'd eliminate the income tax and just replace it with a sales tax that's constitutionally prescribed, no exemptions. Right. And, uh, and everybody uh, equally pays. Forward. Isn't that Obama's argument? Yeah, well, no, no. <laughs> Obama mean, uses the word fair, but he means a sliding scale where uh, the folks that he doesn't like pay a whole lot more. Right, but but with the sales tax, everybody's got skin in the game. Everybody's got skin in the game, and that's what you need. Because right now, when you have people not paying taxes, getting so-called tax refunds, they don't care how much the government spends. Of course not. And 51% of them right now are on a free ride. Yep. Which means that 49% of us are bearing the burden for 51%. Yes, and Plus that, our own families, not to mention. Yeah, and it's worse than that because that 49% not only bears the burden for them, <laughs> we pay the entire burden of the regulatory burden, and all we also pay the burden for the crony capitalism you were mentioning. Right. Every time somebody gets a tax credit, you or I pay for it. It's right. not free. Absolutely. And, and then we're paying for the welfare and, and for the welfare babies and the and the and the the dopers and the and, you know the near duels and the sleaze. I, I'm sick of it, frankly. I'm tired of having to carry my own weight and 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 the guys packed next to me and we're marching through the woods and he's standing there skipping along and I'm carrying 200 pounds. Listen, I, that's exactly what's happening, and it's the folks in the middle that are getting hit. I resent equally having to pay for. The guy in the trailer park who won't pull his weight, and the guy at the country club that is politically connected. There you I go. I resent both equally. There you go. And and truthfully, you know, I mean, it, it's 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 eating us alive. And and I'll tell you something, it's eating us alive. And in, in in a, it's wearying. And I think you know part of the problem, and one of the reasons why we live in the United States of apathy, is because people are so busy trying to just make ends meet. They don't have the time to pay attention to politics. And that's the vast majority. That's the middle group. That's the group in the middle who is actively trying to raise a family, do the right things, work a job, make make money, earn, earn you know, put their kid through college or put their kid through school and trying to make some kind of a life for themselves. The lower group who is is just on a free ride, their attitude is I'm only going to go out and vote for the guy who promises me the most. 
And the guy on the upper end of the scale is so busy manipulating the system financially with his own money and corrupting the people that are in power.